After we returned to New Mexico following Expo East, it was back to work for me as I attempted to refill our operating funds and prepare for a lawyer bill in our ongoing RV suit. Working two full-time jobs had me aching for some time in the wilderness, so when our friends from Phoenix called us and invited us to join them in the Gila of western New Mexico, we were scrambling to prepare for a long weekend warrior adventure. First up was to remove the 23-0 Byron tent we had used for some solo missions in Tennessee to reduce the weight and wind resistance. We don't want to scratch the forerunner. Mama and I have done this before. But I think Mama was a little Actually, bit Actually, Daddy's stronger. done this before and Mama was there. Nuh-uh. You want Teamwork, let's do this, come on. You want to do it again by yourself? <laughs> it's looking like it. <laughs> I know I can do it. Can you? Uh, hi, no, hi. but I can try. Hi, hi. Mm. All right. All right, so this is the Explore Adventure Gear storage bag, very similar to the Trash Roos. But this one's actually lasted longer than two of our Trash Roos, so it's done pretty good. This guy right here is uh, actually version 2.0. That's version 2.1. They gave that to us to test while we were up in Alaska. Did a great job. Had a few tweaks for them. And one of those is this little keeper strap that is in addition to the main carry straps so that it actually gives you an anchor point here so that it can't slide this way or that way or rotate around. Kind of an ingenious idea. And I've purposefully been leaving this guy out in the sun because I want it to bake. And I want to see how long this fabric's going to last. But so far, it is doing good. Really good. Probably one of the unsung heroes of what we do this little guy right here the max coupler I know you've seen some videos of it but it does an incredible job number one for articulation and number two no more rattle no more rattle the next piece to the puzzle to having a totally silent hitch set up is one of these silent ride walking pins this is a standard ball mount your ball would mount right here Max Culper goes in the same bolt hole. The secret to making it even more silent is this. This is just a square nut with a keeper that goes inside the receiver itself. And then you put it in here, like so. And this is a bolt with a locking pin on the end of it. So when you put this in and you tighten the crap out of it, it draws this up against the receiver and you don't get any slap. Now one of the most important parts about a max coupler is you want to grease it before every trip. That ought to do it. Now, Turtleback is on top of this whole silent ride thing. They've actually got a uh, 5 16 bolt right here. So once you put the other side of the max coupler into this two inch receiver, tighten this down, it's solid. It doesn't squeak 
like other people walking around behind me while I'm trying to shoot a video. You want me to have a class or you want to do it yourself? <laughs> Alright, Good morning. Well, obviously we didn't get as early a start as what we had hoped, but it's been a while since we've outfitted for weekend warrior stuff, so it's a bit different. It's easier, but it's different. But there's just different stuff. So let's finish loading up and head west. Hmm. So that 
wraps up night one back here in New Mexico. The sounds of New Mexico at night. Mm. Got the crickets, coyotes, great horned owl. Just all been singing to us. We got to see quite a few shooting stars as well. Just love it. It's good being back. Just climb on into the tent, get a bit of sleep, get this thing going in the morning. Good night. Yeah. What you got there? Uh, we're trying the Stoke Cold Brew coffee. This is the lightly sweet. Lightly sweet. Yeah. Yeah, just a little, like a shot of espresso. Uh huh. Espresso. Espresso. I espresso my espresso distaste. Huh. That'll do. It'll do, right? Yeah. What we got cooking over here? Mm. Fresh, bagels. freshly baked bagels? Mm -hmm. Man. Oh, yeah. That looks good. What are you guys having for breakfast? We're having oh, salami and egg scramble. Ooh, yuck. Mm -hmm. Yuck. I'm you like that. I'm having yogurt and juice box. Oh, you want yogurt and a juice box? That's pretty standard fare. <laughs> that sounds easy. Good morning. Good morning. Something smells ridiculously good over here. Spam and eggs. Oh, my goodness. So, do you guys have an interesting evening last night? Yeah. We, uh, we got to clean up a bunch of poo and pee and <laughs> dog turds all over our tent at 4 30 in the morning. <laughs> Great. <laughs> I think I heard somebody gagging on this a little bit too. <laughs> yeah, that <was> me. <laughs> That's always fun. Well, at least it's been christened now, so. That's know. true. That's true. It's the the inaugural run with this tent, and it got uh, got the full treatment. So. <laughs> What's she cooking? Just salami and egg scramble. Yeah. Yeah. Just salami and egg scramble. That's all. A little protein for the morning. Little, little hog fat. Mmm. Italian hog fat. That's right. Look at that chef stir. Mmm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. You look pretty, by the way. Thank you. I like this weekend warrior thing. <laughs> Why am I prettier when I weekend warrior? Not Just, when I'm full time. Just being honest. You just have more time. <laughs> True. Ew, interesting.
Welcome to the ghost town of Magallan, New Mexico. What was once home to nearly 6,000 miners is now a privately owned collection of historical buildings and artifacts nestled in the narrow Silver Creek Canyon in the Magallan Mountains. This town came into being around 1876 as a result of the gold and silver strikes in the surrounding hills. One mine, named Little Fanny, was the primary employer of the region, and the Cooney Mining District was one of the most prolific in the United States, with an estimated $20 billion by today's standards having been pulled from the ground over the 62 years of activity. With the town's remote location came many troubles and historical characters, such as Victorio, Geronimo, Pancho Villa, and Butch Cassidy, just to name a few. With the large payrolls came bandits that made easy prey of the stagecoach from Silver City, successfully robbing the miners of their hard-earned pay 23 times before being captured by Wells Fargo's agents. At its peak, Mugyam boasted five saloons, two restaurants, four merchandise stores, two hotels, and several brothels located in two infamous red light districts. The town also had a photographer, theater, an ice maker, and a bakery. The Silver City and Mugyan stage line provided daily service, hauling passengers, freight, gold, and silver bullion 80 miles between the two towns in almost 15 hours. Fire and flood threatened to destroy this community multiple times over the years, but its hardy people rebuilt each time with better materials as they fought to maintain a grip on their civilization etched into the canyon side. It all came to an end, however, as with many U.S. gold mines at the beginning of World War II. Mines were shuttered and most were never entered again due to the unprofitable quality of the now expended gold and silver veins. Today, this is a quiet community of a few private owners who help maintain the history and tradition of the hardy people that came before. This could be the moment we've been waiting for The chance to feel alive Nothing's gonna stop us Nothing's gonna top this Nothing like we've ever seen
All right, so we're all fueled up and hammer down from westbound, making our way to Alma, New Mexico, where we're going to meet up with Keith and Maggie, as well as Forerunner for Adventure. You know him if you've seen the video. Austin and Leo. <laughs> it was a late night last night. Keith and Maggie Kessler are two biggest best friends in Arizona. This is just terrible. degrading so fast. Headed to Alma, New Mexico now. But we're gonna meet up with Keith and Maggie Kessler as well as Austin and Leah with Live Work Wonder if you've seen. No. Alright, so we just got all fueled up. Fueled up the car, fueled up the accessory tanks. That's not what they're called. Auxiliary tanks. Auxiliary tanks, roto packs, roto packs. whatever. Yeah. And you guys are, might remember from one of our previous videos, Forerunner for Adventure, Austin and Leah. So, come on. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, you want me to hold it up for you? Oh, probably good. I'm just kidding. <laughs> you had to touch it though. <laughs> I, I didn't it. think I did anything. To... <laughs> Say. I gotta say, this is the best day of my life traveling again. Is it? I mean, it's, it's weird being in the car so long again because we didn't do it in a long time, but um, it is so cool how um, you get to see the world. There's nothing like traveling with good friends along seldom traveled trails. Our adventure continues next week as we drive deeper into the Gila wilderness and find ourselves in a bit of hot water.